Welcome back, watch people. So earlier this week, it was a genuine honour to be invited out with the Met Police's Venice team, a plainclothes undercover unit that concentrates on robbery on the streets of our capital city. And it was indeed a huge compliment to be recognised by the authorities as someone who can be trusted and who is passionate about the issue of watch crime. You guys all know how strongly I feel about that. And this was indeed the first time that a watch YouTuber has been allowed to travel with and in the back of an unmarked police vehicle doing their best to track down and arrest the bad guys. Now, as you might imagine, during the filming, there are moments of sensitive information that had to be edited. So please forgive the odd, unusual moment of silence. But nevertheless, I think you're genuinely going to enjoy this one. And it certainly opened my eyes to the difficulties that the police face. Their job can be a dangerous one. It's certainly unpredictable. And we had no idea of how the day would pan out. But what I did know is that you guys were coming with us. Right, so I'm with uh, Sam and Matt at Southwark Police Station. We're just about to go out in the uh, the BMW. Who would have guessed it? Yeah. What are we up to this morning, gents? Uh, so this morning we're going to be going up and around Houston Road and Oxford Street, where we've seen a spike in snatches on mobile phones and watches as we're coming up to the Christmas period. So we're going to be patrolling around there. Uh, we've got obviously we're out in this car. and we're going to be trying to well, essentially stop these snatchers that are coming down on electric push bikes, blending in as commuters and saw-ons and stopping trying to commit snatches as it's coming up to Christmas. And what about uh, the weather? Do you think the weather will have any effect on the day, Sam? Yeah, well, we did this yesterday, uh, a bit cold, rail strike, stuff like that. I think it'll have a bit of an impact in the footfall around the station yeah. and stuff like that. But we'll adapt and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, we'll jump in and uh, see what we can find. So we're headed into the city now, is, yep. it, and yep. is this, you know, your usual sort of area that you're in? Yep, so there's two parts, obviously South London along the South Bank, it's more the commuter areas. We've got the city here, which obviously isn't necessarily policed by the Met, but people that are committing these crimes, they don't follow the same borders. They, yeah. So we police in the mornings, especially the evenings, the city, and Oxford Street, Euston Road and around that corridor where there's the commuters and it's not only for us like about obviously we want to catch these people but sometimes our presence there alone like people don't realise that our presence there alone is enough for these people yeah. not to come out or they'll come out they'll come you know a team will come out they'll in their fit in their mind they're going to commit robberies this day but they see our, our Venice team out and about and they'll they know what Effectively, and you was you were saying that these gangs, you know, they know what cars you're in. Yep, they know what cars they we're put in it on social media. Yep, uh, they record us, they record the cars, they record the offences they're doing. And if they see, especially like the the Venice teams, and like with that, we put our uh, like marked motorbikes. So whereas if it's just a car behind them, sometimes they take to alleyways that we can't follow them down. Yeah, they know if they've got a motorbike behind them, that it's a different ball game effectively. Do you think social media plays a big role in these guys careers? Uh, yeah I think obviously it's made things easier to sell stuff yeah. but also it's easier to like identify stuff so like obviously we always advise people like especially like in the mornings and you, you, you'll see it as we're going about today that if you had that robber mindset it's quite easy to, to snatch because yeah. some people have got like these noise cancelling earpods in, mm. they're walking down the street and they have their phone out in front of them and some of them will be stood at the curb, you know, and rightly so, they should be able to go about their life, you know, on your phone that you paid for, yeah. listening to your music, watching your films, but unfortunately, unfortunately it doesn't work, that it don't work like that, like, it don't work like that, so the advice we give people is like, put your phone away, when you're walking, put the phone in your pocket, have your headphones in and walk, but like, always be aware, like, look up and around and see what's going on, because before you know it, these bikes are silent, They'll come up behind you, grab it, and it's gone. It's gone before you even know it. Sam, you must find this very rewarding when you, you know, yard work. Oh, I, lo I absolutely love this role. I love it. Um, and some of the results we've had have been fantastic. It could be frustrating because I think the nature of it, 
you do go, you can go through long periods of not having anything. But when you do get yeah, that that result, like the sore one we had last week, yeah. like you know that that's that's yeah, tens, maybe even week. hundreds of potential victims over the next few weeks that you've you've safeguarded, essentially. I think one of the things that strikes me, having met you guys this morning, is I'll be I'll be frank. I mean, the sheer bravery of it, really. I mean, you're going out, you don't know what you're facing, you, you, you're unarmed. Um, do you think about your personal safety a lot? Does it go through your mind much? Um, I mean, it, it has to, but I think we're we're very lucky. We've got we've got the equipment we've got. We have to assess everything as we deal with it. I'm never I'm never going to put myself in in danger or my colleagues as I wouldn't do for any members of the public. And I think so far we've got a very sensible way of dealing with these things, which essentially means that we go home at the end of the shift. Um, He's got, well. Yeah, absolutely. So last week we had a spike, obviously, of robbery snatches in the morning. Uh, obviously the run-up to Christmas, people have got more valuables on them, they're buying stuff and things like that. So we we come in to deal with that. Uh, there was a group or a gang of e-bike robbers, uh, which are on the electric pedal bikes that are unrestricted, that are coming and doing snatches. They've been doing it for a couple of days in a row where we hadn't been in. We've adapted to that. They've then seen us with the motorbikes and everything, not done snatches and gone straight home. So therefore right. we've not arrested anyone. But it's prevented it. But it's prevented it. Yeah. So it's a bit of like, we're not all about, like obviously we, we'd arrest people, but meanwhile while we're here. It's still a win. That's a win for us. Yeah. Like no one's been like, you know, a phone nowadays can be a grand or someone's yeah. watch can be 10 grand. And if, you know, they don't, these people don't realize that they've not been robbed today because there has been that presence there. So, Granted, we've not arrested them that day, yeah. but they've seen us, they've not wanted to continue that day, they've gone away. And then that same day, that the other bikes come out, we've chased him, we've got him, he's had a couple of stolen phones on him, and he's been, the person that's been doing it matches the sure. MO and that for the last yeah. couple of days. So that's yeah. why since then, we've had that little period of a, I'll say it, quietness and like a lull, but it's also like, with you say with social media, things get about yeah. so like we'll arrest someone and that story or version of events you'll hear from someone totally random who shouldn't know that like would have no reason to know that person but they'll be like ah oh, you're the team that got x y and z mm -hmm. and they'll know the story mm -hmm. so obviously if, if people, no one wants to get caught so if they know that a team is out and about in this area they won't come out they won't want to risk it for that day so yeah. it's the knock-on effect of course cool. we've arrested one person but it is that knock-on effect we have with people to be like i don't want to go out around there at the moment because of x y and z like that team is out so it is it is good in that respect so what are we looking for sam but what are you sitting there now what are you sort of so uh, i'm looking for so the commuter type snatches is um people on the e-bikes that blend in well uh, high-vis jackets helmets the lot that looks like any other commuter, but I'm paying attention to, to, to see the style that they're riding, um, just anything like lack of bag um, that indicates that they might not be the usual commuter, they might yeah, be on the lookout. Yeah, gives you a clue. Yeah, paying attention to members of the public, that kind of thing. Um, so looking for that, also looking for any uh, mopeds, we still have the issue of the um, snatches occurring on the mopeds around this time as well. Um, and Does yeah, that just, calm down a little bit, the moped crime? Uh, I think it's just, it goes through fluctuations, I think. I think they, they change now and again. There's, often there's, it's the same groups on the mopeds that change to e-bikes, that change to Sauron. Yeah. It's just different tactics to commit the same offence, essentially. And I think it also depends on what they've got available. Yeah. <laughs> as, as weird as that sounds. Well, they've stolen recently. Yeah. Um, so that's why we've got to sort of bear in mind, we've got to look at a number of different vehicles that they might be using. Um, I think essentially what sort of area you're heading to you're heading towards sort of Houston yeah. the street area yeah. still. Go ahead. So talking about knives and weapons potentially, on, on average, what would you say the percentage is of people that you arrest, how many of them would you say are potentially carrying a weapon? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's difficult to say. I think a lot of the people um, committing these robberies are known for carrying knives in the past. That's usually something we find. Um, 
we had the saw on back in July. That was, he had a knife on him for yeah. that one. Um, but I think a lot of these commuter snatches in particular, that's an, an unnecessary, uh, it's an unnecessary uh, item to have on them. They don't need it in yeah. that circumstance. I think when we were a little bit more focused on the street robbery, I think that's where we found the knives were being, sure. being held more prevalent. And if it's more of a, a watch robbery, then that's where you'd more find the weapons, mm -hmm. especially in London, because it will be more of a case of, right, cool, we're, we're getting off the bikes, getting off out of the cars or whatever mode of transport, but they want to get that robbery committed as quick as possible. <coughs> so the threat of violence or a weapon will intimidate yeah. the victim there to speeds give up, up the process. Speeds up the yeah. process. Yeah. Like, and as, ultimately, all it comes down to is that, that bullying intimidation tactic of, I want this as quick as I can, give it to me. Rather than when it's a snatch, the weapon doesn't really matter. It's more sleight of hand to get it out of someone's. And is there any sort of particular, would you say there's um, a pattern that forms the, the type of victims or is it anyone and everyone? I think it's anyone and everyone yeah. to be honest. But back to what you were saying about like social media. So obviously it's become a platform now that you people can show what they've got you know, you see it online, oh, people have got a new car, they've got a new watch, and things like this. And what people will do is they'll video themselves, put up a story online of them being on the night out with their pals. Yeah. And innocently, you know, you're videoing your mates, but you've got your watch on display in that video, yeah? You've had a few drinks, you've got your watch on display. No one will notice that. But somebody who's interested in watches and wants to rob you, you know, they will watch that video. Yeah. So suddenly you've now got, you know, I'm out in a club with my mates, I've got my 10 grand Rolex on, I've videoed myself and I've tagged myself at a club in Mayfair. And I'm like, like you then look at that story, you know I'm, you know that right know now I'm there, I'm live, and I've, you know, you could have a 30 grand watch on your wrist, yeah? Mm. So the gang will just wait up outside of it. Do you, do you get many, what we would call spotters, people that are hanging around, basically just observing? So that's more people that are on, they're on foot. They won't really do that on, on bikes. On bikes. The bike ones are more, you know, especially like in the summer, they'll come past, they'll see the watch, and then they will then circle back round and target you. But nine times out of ten, the person that's been targeted hasn't even realised they've been targeted. Like the bikes will go past, they'll clock the watch, and, nine times, and sometimes it's not a real watch. It could be. Yeah, it could be a, a fake. A fake Rolex, yeah. but they don't know until they get up to that watch and get it off their wrist. So, but yeah, like on foot you get the spotters, like, where they'll clock people and then move in, but that's more of like The phones a, are still a big target, are they? Oh, huge, huge really? thing, huge thing. Like, every day. And that's why we're around these areas constantly trying to deter these people from coming down here, effectively. I suppose it's all about the value of a... Well, you think how much a phone now, though? Yeah, an iPhone, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was ask, asking you, like, how much, like, a watch... A watch goes for, yeah. like, second-hand. Like, I'm sure, it, obviously, it's not to do with, like... It's not robberies, but I'm still a big thing. Have you seen, like, on line at the moment, like, Range Rovers and Jaguars and, like, keyless cars getting stolen from people's driveways? Is that right? I didn't know. No. Yeah, so they can do it where they... You see it, they... They did a scanner. So someone came to my house the other day, tried to steal my car, they did a scanner at the door. Right. So they scan the signal from your keys, pass it to like a mobile device, which then unlocks the car. They take the second device and the car started. And I was speaking to someone the other day, and a hundred grand Range Rover, they're getting 10 grand to go for selling on. You know, there's all these things get like this, cars getting stolen, watches, phones. You know, if you're, you can make thousands. Like, I always that's say why these, we're working on all these things. These criminals are so clever. If they weren't so crooked, they'd make a good living earning an honest living. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. So this is Houston Road. Uh, this is where we see a lot of the offenders and committed. Obviously, you've got like main arterial. You've got King's Cross down there. You've got Houston here. And then you've got Tottenham Court down there. So they're heavy foot, footfall areas of where you will have people yeah. coming and going from work. And the thing is, like, when you're going to work in the morning, you're tired, you're half asleep, you just want to get to the, 
wherever sure. you're going. You got, you know, you're looking if your train's been cancelled. <laughs> yeah, like you don't know what's going on, and the last thing you expect. So as well as us to turn, we're trying to get it out there more, like publicise it for people to be aware of these things that are going on. So then people are less likely to fall victim to. So are the train stations a particular hotspot then? Yeah, not directly on like on the platforms and in the in there because the footfall's too busy for these people. Yeah, outside though. Outside, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because obviously the people doing it, they need the manoeuvrability to get sort of like in and out of people. Yeah. But like the, the one we had the other day, the Sauron, he come the wrong way. Like, so we chased him all around there, but then he comes the wrong way down this road here. So then we have to call that off. Like, you look how many cars are here now, mm. and you're balancing the speed of what a bike's doing yeah, one way and coming this way. It's hard then because, you know, normally, like I said, we've got a duty of care. If that person, like we, if the person dies, we could be criticised. So we're, yeah. where our training comes in is holding that risk but we stopped here as he come the wrong way we didn't follow but luckily enough another car was further down there so he's calmed down a bit while driving down here because we've not followed so we've let him have that that time to you know he doesn't need to necessarily take as many risks to get away now because we've stopped but unbeknown to him where we work as a team and our communications on point he's just been picked up there by another car so then he's back on the correct side of the carriageway so the risk is then lowered so we're then good to go again because sometimes that phone call of, oh, there's a couple of people look a bit suspicious dressed like this are in the area can be the difference between someone getting robbed yeah. and not getting robbed. Well, we can get there and maybe push them away out the area. They go home, they don't want to do it today. Or, you know, some like we had somebody, we arrested someone three days ago, two up on a moped tried to do a school it wasn't up here it was on our way obviously we've got quite a from our base to come here we we travel we come through several different boroughs so if we come across something then we will deal with that robbery there irrespective we're not just dealing with robberies up here and two 14 year old lads done a robbery with a bayonet and they said that they've never ridden a moped before and it's their first time doing a robbery and hopefully they've now realized that it's not worth it yeah you know like they've done it once, or even if like, it'd have been even better if they'd have tried it, been sort of like scared off and realised actually, Joe, you know what this isn't for me. Hopefully, it could change the direction. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Like they're, they're kids, they're, they're 14 year old kids. Yeah. And this is the thing, like we are finding, which is probably like the most worrying thing, is that a lot of the people committing these crimes are under the age of 18. Like they're children. They they are they are children. Are they gang members? Uh, no, not, not always. Not yeah. always, not always, no. Um, no. It just a, so a lot of them are working alone? Yep, sometimes alone, sometimes... With their best mate. The best yeah. mate, sometimes in a larger group of people. It just depends on the tactic that they want to necessarily go with. So as you guys are driving around there, you're just scanning for what you would think maybe looks like a little bit suspicious, I suppose. Yeah, just anything that's looks out of the ordinary, or yeah, as you as you heard uh, before, the different methods by which people are yeah. committing these robberies and anything that stands out. And we're still focused here because this is where this is where the numbers seem to be happening. This is where the offences are occurring still. So that intelligence picture kind of dictates a little bit where we go. And then Matt's on a channel uh, which basically has got someone in a control room where there's any robberies matching what we would go after. And they basically will tell us where that is happening. So it, whilst it's here at the moment, if suddenly stuff starts kicking off a little bit down in Brixton or Peckham, then we could just move all of these resources over there yeah. to try and work out there. So what would be the process? I mean, supposing there was someone on the left-hand side now um, committing a robbery, what would be the process? Would you and Matt just deal with that yourselves? Would you call back up? Um, it's kind of it depends what the circumstances are. If it's, you know, if it's moped or e-bike or something, you're going to need more 
people here. I think we've got to weigh up how close people are as well. So like yeah. quickly we would be on our channel saying like we've got this here, how like where's our next unit kind of thing? Yeah. Because they're high like these people are hyper aware. So you doomed if you are doomed if you don't sometimes. Like if they're here and our next unit is they're like we're three minutes away. Well three minutes here is too long. Like we will just have to deal with the cards we've been dealt and somehow we'd try and we we'll probably try and reinforce him, wouldn't we? Put yeah. we we'll probably catch him by surprise, put the car across the front of him, yeah. so he has to force to turn, because that's when he's at this like static point, and then hopefully Sam's quick enough on his toes to. And when you do catch these guys in general, would you say there's a sort of a a usual general reaction? But how are they? You know, how do they sort of how do they take it? I think on the whole, they'll do their best to get away for this deployment for these kinds of robberies, they'll do their best to get away. I've usually found that once you've got them, they're in handcuffs, it's a little bit of the game's up. Yeah. That's it. It's a bit different to other stuff we might have done in the past with yeah. kids dropping knives and running off and stuff like that. There's, but I think it's just a maturity issue as well and maybe the age is slightly older, maybe, for what we're going after here. Have you ever found yourselves feeling sorry for someone that you've nicked? Um, for robbery, probably not. No. Yeah. Because the robbery is having such a knock-on effect yeah. on other people's lives, yeah? So it is very hard to feel sorry for someone when you have been first-hand dealing with those victims and see the effect it has on their lives. Yeah, I think that's a great answer to be But fair. with yeah. other offences, like even as severe as a knife, then yes, because you see that person sometimes, and it is children, in their most vulnerable place. They're not allowed, they're not around their friends. They haven't got this mask on, and they're telling you why they're, car like, they're carrying this knife. And sometimes it is for their own protection, and they're petrified. Like, they're, they'd rather get arrested than risk getting stabbed. So it's like, when you put it in, you know, in that situation, you've got a 14-year-old kid that's so scared that they're going to get stabbed on the streets of London that they feel the need to carry their knives themselves. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's sad. Oh, that's, that's quite hard. But with the robbery side of it, then, no. I was robbed at knife point when I was young, coming home from school. And, oh, that was horrible. Like, to go through that experience as a kid myself, and they're kids often that are committing it. How old victims. was you then? I was 13, 14. Do you think that played a role in your decision to become a police officer? Um. Maybe. My dad was a police officer, so I, I sort of I had that background yeah. anyway. Um, but certainly, I think it's affected how I want victims to feel when, I've, when I'm speaking to them. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying I understand how it feels to be in their shoes for every situation, but I've been in, in a similar situation and I'm aware of the, the, the impact that it can have on you. Um, because that was my, yeah, I remember that was my route home from school, and I had to change my route completely because I was so scared of coming across those people again, mm -hmm. and it was horrible. Do you reckon it's worth? Yeah, I'm going to go this way. Yeah. 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 What left, do you reckon? Keep going for the moment, because if you're saying go to the square, I want you to go out a bit further. It's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, thanks, sir. Thanks, Edward. Um, yeah, he's got a fur-like collar than I see. Yeah, it's the two up. I saw it go up part lane up. 
I wasn't sure whether so it was a female on, on the back of it, but it was quite high set up. So what's the call saying? So it's one of the Venice tasking team. It was on Park Lane going northbound as we were coming southbound, and they've seen a two up moped. It's yeah, got. Um, it's previously been stopped in relation to robberies, but I, I wasn't sure what the link is with the robbery. But in this area at this time, it's just worth paying more attention to it. They've lost it. It hasn't made off or anything, but they've lost it. Grosvenor Square from Park Lane. So we're going to go coming out Regent Street in case it's carried on a bit further. Yeah. But as you can tell, it's a little bit, bit difficult with the traffic the already. Is, um, a green hoodie and a black jacket. No. So only with this one. Um, he's, he's wearing with a balaclava on. The things there, that yeah. kind of things. Yeah, yeah. You know, be roughly at Yorkshire Circus yeah. Junction now. Uh, if anyone's around Oxford Circus, just lost sight of him. Uh, a black e-bike, uh, black balaclava. So it's top of Regent Street, down into Oxford Circus, going southbound. We lost sight of it. Uh, Regent Street. Where are you uh, now? Like we'll north of Regent Street way. towards Oxford Circus, and we lost sight of him at Oxford Circus. So I don't know, I've lost sight of him just as he's got to the end. We will do Oxford Street going towards Tottenham Court Road. If you want to do Regent Street, continue going down. Should we go left? Yeah. Uh, we've taken the option to look eastbound Oxford Street. No, I don't. I don't think he's done a right towards Marble Arch because he was hugging the near side. He kept the cycle lane all the way down. So I think he's either done the left Oxford Street or he's done southbound Very Regent Street. Like I can't even see him up there, can no. you? He must have left him down. Did you just have him get to the junction? So the bus, he went around the bus that was at the junction. Yeah. So I couldn't see which way he went from there. And there was too much um, traffic to see which way he left or not. Because the rucksack he had on his back wasn't a food rucksack, it was like a Nike rucksack. It was like a flat, small one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, nothing here. Uh, we've had no trace Oxford Street to Junction Tottenham Court Road, which is going to do along Shaftesbury, uh, back towards sort of Leicester Square, bottom end of Regent Street. Yeah, on the top channel. Scorpion Street, one, go ahead. Oh, in top, sorry, my radio's changed. So something as minor as that is enough to put you guys on alert. 
Uh, yeah, what well, was? Yeah, just draws our attention. Like we've seen nothing all day, and he, he might just be he might be innocently going about. He's yeah. just chosen that. But it's a bit odd. Just draws our attention to him. Certainly warrants us wanting to um, speak to him, see what he's about. Because some of our previous jobs, that's all it started as. Just someone. It's not an exact. It's not like an exact science. Yeah. Like you know, it's just you look. It gives you something to think. Oh, maybe. Yeah. So what was that, Sam? Uh, so that was circulation on uh, Lambeth, which was only a mile that way. Um, a lad's been chased down by four other lads and he's got into his car to get away from them. And so they've got a knife out and they've slashed the tires of his car. So that was just a circulation in case we see the suspect vehicle, which is a black. So just in case we end up just coming Just in case you it. see it, yeah. yeah. I read that. Try that. It was just, he was blowing though, weren't he? Wow. Is that him up there? No. No, that must have left. No, no warning signals, no conviction history. Palestra, yeah, yeah, confirm, um, two minutes out. Is that a cancel? Yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. That's right, no worries, cheers. So Matt, Sam, really want to thank you for taking us out today. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honour. Um, not the busiest of the days, but that's not such a bad thing, is it? No, it's, it's a good thing for us. But, you know, it would have been better to have shown you more things and we'll get you back in the summer. But Yeah, can I come back in the summer? Yeah, yeah definitely. But for the can. impact we're doing, yeah, it's definitely. It's and you, it's good. You, you work, you know, what came through for me today was your enthusiasm to do what you're out there to do, and I was, I really was impressed with that. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. It was lovely having you in the back. Yeah. Thanks very yeah, much, no. and uh, stay safe. Yeah, we'll do. And uh, I'll see you in the summer when yeah, it's a bit warmer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Cheers, guys. Take lovely. care. Cheers. Thank you. By the way, his driving Cheers. skills are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, lads. Cheers. Cheers.